Welcome to Channel AMAC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Yang, your online YouTube visa consultant. Are you interested about migrate to Australia? Why don't you consider to subscribe to my channel and turn on the little bell on the side so we will see all the updates. You'll be the first one getting all the insight. Now today's video is all about how the case officer, uh, the immigration case officer, SS visa. So uh, I'm gonna do a series of videos and go into the actual detailed law and take you through how the law has its spec and showing how a case officer would actually assess a visa application. So a lot of people do have a lot of um, uh, question and queries in regards to how a visa will actually work or perhaps what is the chances of getting their visas uh, validated or uh, granted or approved. Uh, anyway, we have all that information in this channel. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. So let's jump into the Legend Calm. Now, if you don't know about Legend Calm, it's actually a database library specific for the immigration specialist now sometimes I take people to this page and now make it's it's a it's a paid service so normally you know general public don't access to this information but I take you to a page why because all the case officers go through from here as well so if we, if we can understand uh, despite all the regulation and law and clauses it may not sound uh, although it's in English but it may not sound meaningful but I'm here to actually explain how at how it will actually work so anyway uh, you may turn on your speakers or try and understand it but if you don't know it's okay you can repeat and go back again anyway uh, and also can make leave a comment right down below I can answer the question for you as well all right so uh, I'm taking this uh, example uh, with the uh, subclass 189 which is the most inquire skill migration pathway it's an independent skill migration it doesn't require a state nomination it, it solely depend on you as long as you can score enough the points in order to get the federal government interested and then send you an invitation now uh, this is actual law piece of law um, as you can see a lot of words it may not sound um, quite easily to be understandable but let's go through it okay so every uh, subclass or every visa uh, do given a subclass here uh, within the migration regulation 1994 and they give a little name on it so it says skill independence so that is, it means it's, it's a skill based visa and it's independently needed it doesn't dependent on any nomination or sponsorship at all okay so the 189.1 is interpretation but it's uh i don't think i need to go through this as registered course assessing authority skill occupation we have gone through millions of time in this channel but if you want to know detail about skill assessment or uh, perhaps a strategy study requirement you may want to go uh, search within my channel you may find those videos there uh come to english now what is competent english, competent english has a definition of IELTS across four bands with at least six across all the different bands so you may want to check that out as well but I did make a video in regards to the language uh, if you want to get one a nine perhaps yeah, six is not enough a competent is not enough and my my suggestion and my advice is you need to aim at superior English otherwise I don't think you get enough points to actually get invited anyway that's the minimum uh, come to English but you get zero points on it so there are three streams there are point test it's the general skill migration stream where 90 percent of people are interested about it because why depend on someone else why need a nomination or why need a sponsorship from a state uh, government why not just do it yourself it's easier you're much more free you don't have that constraint required to get in stay in a particular regional area for three years and there's also new zealand stream and hong kong stream now i'm not going to go into the actual criteria but here i'm um, actually taking you through the flow of how 
the case officer, the immigration officer actually go through. So first thing they were told, th these are general introductory, so interpre interpretation and the um, information here. Now, the first section that we can see here is what they call common criteria. Now, common criteria is where all stream required to go through and also the secondary um, uh, visa holders required to go through as well and you can you may see a lot of numbers it may not sound uh, it doesn't give any meaning but once we click in, in these four zero zero one four zero two it does pops out with uh, additional law in there now these are so-called the public interest criteria where uh, the 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 law the immigration law requires to have a public interest criteria to test the applicant whether they they won't be a uh, negative effect into the community of australia so generally these are all character and health concern kind of stuff so whether or not they uh they have a severe disease illness or they have character issue they you know they're they're criminal perhaps uh anyway that's that's basically what they uh require and that's and also the the member you can see member each member of family need to pass the public interest criteria four zero one six uh one nine one five one six and five zero zero one special return criteria as well so these are all uh very generic stuff basically it's it's a thing that you've been asked for police checks police certificates and also medical check as well so that's and also the biosecurity uh, numbers of countries are required to go through biosecurity now so that's how they go through that first one now you may you may recall uh for a generic visa application these kind of things are predominantly being requested at the end of the visa application uh but look i don't know why in the law it's put out at the first section here but anyway that's how the law works okay now the first stream is the point test stream so the case officer after they check one that, that one they will generally go into the second uh, area where they pick the stream so during your visa applications uh, you will you will pick the stream that you wanted to apply for so in imi account once you click on the 189 uh, visa application there, there are several stream you need to pick the right one otherwise you'll be wasting your money because the money generally do not get refunded from uh, the governments anyway so make sure you pick the right one so anyway uh, predominantly if you're interested about skill migration you'll pick this point test stream where the first thing is it says it needs to be invited so how do you get invited well you need to go through skill select system where you put in an eoi where and you score enough points that's why i'm saying if you only got aim at you aim yourself at competent english you probably will never end up in this invite so you, you probably will aim at superior english with hours over eight across four bands then you will get invited because you will get enough points as a, a lot of people may ask about this because there has been a lot of people with 80 point 90 point and still waiting so uh you need to get high point enough to get invited and the minimum point is 65 now the the next one is at the time of invitation now this is important very very important phrase when you when you read about this because that basically tell you at that specific point of time and that's why i say i i, I urge a lot of um, people in regards to this one is that uh you need to get your visa application ready so a lot of people go into their eoi expression of interest and they're punching whatever the information that they have but in fact, they don't have that ready yet. For example, you put your skill assessment and assume that you will pass and you put positive in there or assume you have IELTS 8 across 4 BIM, but you, in fact, you haven't got it yet. Now, if you do that, that's false information. So at the time of inv in invite, if you don't have those informations, you will get struck out at, under the clause of 189 point triple two unfortunately so at the time of invitation you have skill assessment ready that is exactly why i've been urging a lot of people if you're interested about migrating australia by skill whether it's going to be skill migration or employment you need to really get skill assessment done because that's that thing this phrase is possibly in a lot of visa laws so you need to get that done okay 
And this assessment is not for for a fi uh, uh, purpose. In the assessment specified during uh, there's validity, you need to actually get that valid. So you cannot take a skill assessment result that is uh, in 2000 and. 15 that's already invalid and the uh, validity for any skill assessment should be around three years unless it's specified uh, by the skill assessing authority now if a skill assessment is made by a qualification obtained in australia the applicant held a student visa the qualification was obtained as a result of a registered course so what does that means so if you're a student international student obviously you study in the registered court i don't i don't think that the law and institution now provide courses for people that is not under student visa anymore but anyway they probably will still be people like that anyway okay so at the time of invita invitation again you need to have at least Compton English so but Compton English generally don't get you anywhere now next one is they are checking your points so one under sub the the clause 189.224 basically you see all this score and subdivision b division three or part two of the act now what is all that that's basically the point test table so they are going into every single items on your age qualifications skills uh, experiences and things to actually add up all, all the points make sure you meet the points requirement on minimum 65 okay and the next one is 224 again you see this again if at the time of the application the application holder is 491 that means you cannot lodge a further uh, 189 visa if you're a holder of 491 visa which has not lapsed for at least three years and that's the next thing that they, they will check okay but generally uh, I think they, this will be automatically enforced so when you got into EMI account you probably can't even uh, lodge your 189 visa if you have recently been approved and granted with a 491 visa but make sure you don't do that because if that's that's it they uh, they take your money and that is not going to be refunded at all uh, to specify the public interest so the member of family again they will check again because see the problem here is why do they check this and they have common criteria up there to check again so sometimes uh, again like like the scenario like today the backlog and delay uh, causing a lot of problems so between the lodgement date and the time of grant perhaps that's always already a 12 month or you know two years I, I don't want that to happen but there will be a period of time between lodgement and the grant of day so uh, things may get uh, invalid uh, so you need to get that updated again so that's basically what it meant okay now moving onwards and oh that, that's it so that's it so if you check that done and then uh, the 5010 that's police check again so okay and the next one obviously is New Zealand stream now they go through the same procedures and as how the uh, immigration officer would do they go one by one so they will check whether or not you have lived in Australia for five continuously five years and you arrived before the February 19th of 2016 and whether or not you have paid taxes you have shown your tax income tax um, uh, individual income tax return you need to put that in there and uh, that's for New Zealand stream and again they're checking out three years of tax as well again and then basically they, they check your health and uh, character and that's it so that's pretty easy uh, as compared to the point test stream now the last one is the Hong Kong stream is recently being added in um, uh, it's 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 just for the sake of the event happening 2019 and 2020 about the national security law so if you're a hong kong citizen uh and you hold uh for a 457 visa or 482 visa or 485 visa for at least about four years and living in australia then you'll be able to generally uh get permanent residency and and obviously you still need to text uh, <clears throat> they, they still need to you need to pass the test of the health and character as well so and that's it that's basically it so it's it's quite easy uh, the exercise that today's video is all about showing how a case office actually go through the law and policies and apply those policy by matching whatever the information or data or supporting evidence that you have provided in email account and giving you the final say the finalization of the, of the visa whether whether it's going to be a uh, grant which obviously everybody will want that uh, or perhaps you some 
uh, clauses you do not meet the requirement. For example, uh, the skill assessment is invalid, or it's never a, a, a true fact in there, uh, or anything else like that. Then you you are likely to attract a visa refusal. Then, anyhow, should you have more question query, more than welcome to leave a comment right down below, and I see you next video. Goodbye.